I'm Dave Donasso. And I'm Jeremy Talby. Today, we're hiking the Sonoran Desert in search of all things venomous. Whether it's spiders, scorpions, or snakes, if things are bite, it's on the list. After watching this episode, we hope you have less fear and a better understanding of these amazing animals. And now it's time to hit the desert and bring some nature in your face. Nature in your face! So we've been flipping rocks, looking in cracks and crevices, trying to find these amazing venomous creatures. Haven't gotten one yet. Hey. What do you got? Black Widow. Awesome. All right. Hold on, I need a stick. I'm not picking that thing up. Right I'm gonna make my way up there. Hang Just on. bring it down to me. Hang on. This web is strong. Okay, I got her. Here. Whoa. Bring it to me, go. let me see. Right here, here we go. That. See her? Yeah, hang on, let me get it nice and tight. Right there. Look that, at that creature. That is a western black widow. Oh yeah. Wow. Hold it still, hold it still. There we, there go. There we, there go. we go, cool. All right. Awesome, hey, good. do me a favor. Get on this side of the camera, let's, let's tell everybody about this cool animal. All right, let's do it. All right, so we have our first venomous animal here, the western black widow. Now there are plenty of venomous species of spider in this desert, but this is the only one that you need to be concerned about. That's because this species has a venom 15 times more powerful than the average rattlesnake. Now what makes them even more dangerous than just having that potent venom is they can be found not just in the desert, but by structural buildings and even your own backyard due to plenty of water and insects for them to consume. Fortunately, it's a very easy spider to identify with that black shiny body and that beautiful red hourglass on the abdomen. Now the coolest part is scientists have figured out that that red hourglass, it is visible to birds and mammals warning them to stay away, that it is dangerous. But the insects, they can't see it. They fly right into the web and they're able to control the insect population. This might be the first venomous animal that we encountered in the desert, but it's certainly not gonna be the last. Diamondback. Diamondback. There it is. Oh, hold on, 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 now Dave, wouldn't you agree with me in saying this is one of the most common venomous snakes that you can find out here in the Sonoran Desert? This is one that uh, most people would encounter. Again, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. It blends in perfectly with the trail here, which can be a good or a bad thing. <laughs> good for the snake, bad for the person who steps on it. it the, uh, the biggest thing to observe here is how relaxed this snake is. Hikers, these guys, they kind of freak people out when they see them, but all he's trying to do is from point A to point B, not be disturbed. And even though we are stopping him, he just wants to keep on going, not too aggressive. Yeah, and it's funny, they all have different personalities. Some you come upon and they just rear up and they buzz. This guy's barely even shaking his tail. He's really, really mellow. One of the more mellow Western Diamondbacks I've ever encountered. Look at this guy, he's just like, whatever. Let me go about my night, find some rats, do my thing. Very cool. Another venomous animal. There he goes. A little bit of a buzz. A little farewell buzz for us. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake is an iconic symbol of the Wild West. A venomous critter that conjures up images of the days of outlaws and gunslingers. And one that we would run into several more times as we made our way through the desert. Not all of the venomous animals that we're gonna to find today are gonna to be a threat to humans. This is a perfect example. We've just encountered a ringneck snake. Despite the fact that it's mildly venomous, the venom only affects the things it eats, which would include small snakes, lizards, other little creatures in the desert. Now, if you get a close-up shot of this snake, when it's threatened, it flips over, it shows off its beautiful yellow 
an orange belly. It's very bright, kind of startles the predators, warns them to back off. I could be a potential danger to you. It's not, however, to bigger animals. It's just a trick. In fact, the worst thing about picking this snake up is it pooped on me. <laughs> so it left me with a pretty bad smell on my hand. Other than that, we're fine, we're good to go. We're gonna let him out, go on his way, and we're gonna find some more venomous creatures here in the Sonoran Desert. Just a little poop defense, nothing wrong That's with it. that. I'm gonna wipe it on you. <laughs> Let's go. The sun began to melt below the horizon, like butter in a bowl of hot grits. And the night- Wait, can it be cheese grits? Okay. The sun began to melt below the horizon, like butter in a bowl of hot cheese grits and the venomous nighttime animals were preparing to emerge from the cracks and underground burrows. Stick to this side. All right. well, at least it's a little cooler out. Oops. No, no, venomous. Nope, here we go, got a scorpion. What do you got, what do you got? Got a bark scorpion. No way. Yeah. You know, there are dozens of species of scorpions in this desert. This is the most venomous in North America. Yeah, these guys are awesome. They have the skinnier, but really long tail. Now they use that tail to inject venom as opposed to fangs like the spiders that we saw earlier. You know, these things aren't easy to find, but we have a little trick that we're gonna show you. Once the sun goes down, we have a really unique way of locating these scorpions. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be really cool. Now, wait a minute. What? I think there's another one further up here. What? How would you know that? I can hear it barking. That's not why they're called bark scorpions. They live in trees. Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> okay, the sun is finally down and this is the perfect opportunity to show you guys exactly what we were saying, how easy it is to find scorpions at night. Now I've got my regular light shining on them. I'm gonna turn the headlamp off and I'm gonna shine a black light on this scorpion. This is one of the most amazing things you will see. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. This scorpion's body is reacting to the UV and black light. It is glowing. No other creature in the desert glows like a scorpion. So what we do is we come out here at night, we shine and we find all kinds of different species of scorpions crawling around. That is just beautiful. Look at that. Scientists are not completely sure what causes a scorpion to fluoresce under black light or what purpose it serves, if any. What they do know is that it comes from a thin and very durable substance found in the hyaline layer of the scorpion's exoskeleton called the cuticle. It's also been discovered that a scorpion will not glow immediately after shedding and only begins to glow once the outer layer hardens. It has been theorized that the substance that causes them to illuminate may help scorpions locate one another, confuse predators, or protect them from sunlight. We made our way to the mountains, and as we hiked along the rocky slopes, the habitat began to change. That's when we found several speckled rattlesnakes. We almost stepped on this beautiful white and gray one as it sat perfectly camouflaged among the rocks. As we moved further along, the landscape began to change, and so did the color of the rattlesnakes. We noticed the snakes had less white and more of an orange color to their bodies, matching the clay-colored rocks surrounding them. Later that night, we came across one of the most ridiculously colored speckled rattlesnakes we've ever found. All right, we have another example of venom in the desert. You remember we caught a speckled rattlesnake. It was kind of a bluish gray color. So what kind of snake do we have here? The exact same snake. So how is it possible that two species, the same kind, can be completely different colors. Well, they have different colors based on different habitats. This beautiful pink helps to match the clayish color that we find around here. And then the bluish gray matches the slate and the rock found in the other one. Now, both of these guys like to sit a little higher elevations, which we have the same here, just different colorations in the habitat. All right, we just come across a night snake. Now, you might be surprised, but these guys are primarily nocturnal. They come out at night. Who would have thought the night snake, active at night, 
Now, they are mildly venomous, but the venom is not known to be harmful to humans. They have enlarged teeth in the back of their jaw that they use to subdue lizards and snakes. Apparently, not harmless to those guys. Now, we're just going to put this guy on the ground and let him go. Another beautiful snake that we found during the night. Although the animals highlighted in this video are venomous, their benefit outweighs the often over-exaggerated danger they pose to humans. They play a vital role in the environment and their toxins can be extracted and used medicinally. Look for part two of Venom in the Desert, where we feature killer bees, more rattlesnakes, the deadly venomous chihuahua, and toxic amphibians.